Welcome back my favorite Python programmers to a brand new video and in this one we're going to be creating a menu manager for a restaurant using object oriented programming in Python as a Python exercise. And we're going to be covering the following topics. So if at any point you feel that you're enjoying the contents of this video, please make sure to slap that like button because I need to beat whatever algorithm there is out there. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so if you don't know how all of this works, basically as soon as we start, I'm going to present you with the program guide, which you need to follow and try to do your best to create the project or the program on your own. And then you can watch how I do it and follow the steps. And again, if at any point you start creating and working through the guide on your own and you feel stuck, you can always go to where I've arrived follow the steps and then continue from there. But anyways, first of all, you'll need to create a class menu item with a constructor that takes in three parameters, name, category, and price, and set these three attributes. Also override the special underscore underscore str method. If you don't know how these things work, I'm going to link the video that discusses classes and object oriented programming in Python. Next, you'll need to create a class menu manager with a constructor that doesn't take any parameters and simply initializes a dictionary of menu items as an attribute. So the second class that you'll need to create is going to be the menu manager that will initialize a dictionary. And what is this dictionary going to look like? Well, this dictionary has a key as category. So if you don't know how dictionaries operate, again, I'm going to link the dictionaries video somewhere at the top. So basically, this dictionary is going to have keys as the categories of the menu items and the value and its value as another dictionary that has key name and value as the items object. So this is going to be a nested dictionary so you'll have a dictionary inside of another dictionary and first of all you'll have the keys as the categories and the values as other dictionaries that have key as the name of the item and the value as the object itself so we move on the class should have a add items method that takes in an item and adds that item to the dictionary. It adds the item based on its category. And if the category doesn't exist, a new category is created and the item is added. Next, you'll need to define a remove item, that method that takes in the name and category of an item and removes it from the dictionary. Define an update item price, method takes in a name, category, and the new price, and then, of course, updates the price of the item provided. And finally, well, not finally, there's one more step, but define the list items by category that takes in a category and prints out all the items in it. This is going to be very helpful later on. And finally, now finally, the test or test out the classes and methods at every single step. So pause the video right now and go try to do the program guide. All right, so first of all, what we did in here is we created a class menu items. If you, and if you don't know what a class is, basically this is going to be a blueprint from which individual menu items will be created. Each item will have attributes like name, category, and a price. Or to be more specific, when I double clicked on these, these are the parameters and these are going to be the attributes. Yes, there is a difference because notice when I double click on the price, this is highlighted, this is not. While if I double click on this one, this one is highlighted because these are the parameters that we are assigning to these attributes. And yes, the attributes will have the same name as parameters. This is convenient for us as programmers or Python programmers to be more specific. Next, we define the initialization method also referred to as the constructor, which is the underscore underscore in it. And this is a special method in Python called automatically whenever a new object or an instance of a class is created. And it has four parameters, the self name, category, and the 
price. Now the self is a reference to the instance of the class in itself. And I'll show you when we explain this line exactly what this self means, even though I've explained it so much before, but a lot of people still have problems with it. A lot of people still ask me questions about it. So I'm going to repeat it as many times as needed. Next, we have the name. This is simply going to be a string that represents the name of a menu item, for example, cheeseburger or veggie pizza or whatever. Next, we have a category that is going to be a string that describes the category of the menu item, such as the main course or app appetizers, dessert, drinks, etc. And finally, we have the price, which is going to be a float that indicates the cost of a menu item. And keep in mind, this is going to be a float because again, the prices could be 3.5, not necessarily just 5, 6, 7, they can be 10.22, whatever. Now, inside of the method, these parameters are assigned to their respective attributes. And this means that each menu item created from this class will store its own name, its own category and price. Then, of course, we also define this another special method that is the underscore underscore str. And this method is used to return a string representation of the object, which is going to be very handy for us to quickly print out and check what the attributes of a certain instance is in a very neat way, instead of just having to print each one individually. And this method only has the self parameter because it operates on the data contained within the class instance. And finally, we're going to test this out by creating the latte right here, which is going to be of type menu item. And you can see that the name is latte, the beverage is the category and the price is 3.5. Now notice right here that this init takes in four parameters, right? Including the self, even though the self has a different color, which should tell you that it's kind of different than the name category and price. And notice that we only provided three which is the name, category, and price. So where's the self? Well, the self is actually the latte itself. So when we say self right here, we say that the latte.name is going to be the name that we've provided. The latte.category is going to be the where? I'm sorry, the latte.category category is going to be beverage later on. If I pr create, for example, a burger, the burger is going to be the self and it will have its own name, its own category and its own price. So this is how the self works. Okay, so this is a part that I was very worried a lot of students students are going to stumble upon. How do we make this or initialize this as a dictionary? Especially the fact that I told you a lot about this dictionary. So you might be thinking, oh, I should have added some stuff in here. I know it's complicated, but these are the things that you need to get used to when working uh, on projects on your own. So we define a class in here that is the menu manager. And again, this class is going to be used to manage multiple menu item instances. It's going to be like a container or a system through which we can add, remove and modify uh, a item or items on a menu. Next, we focus on the initialization method in here. That is the underscore underscore in it. And this is again, a constructor of the menu manager class. It only takes in one parameter that is the self. And as I told you, the self represents what it represents the instance in of itself. And inside of this method, we initialize only one attribute that is the menu items that is an empty dictionary. And this dictionary is going to be used to store menu items. So I've already explained to you how it will look like on the inside, but let me just give you a clearer understanding now that you've seen how a item is created. So the keys of this dictionary will be the category. So for example, we'll have a category beverage, we'll have a category dessert, we'll have a category uh, burgers, whatever. So the categories are going to be the keys right here. And the value of each key is going to be another dictionary where the items name will be the key and the value is going to be the object in itself. And this will become clearer once I create the add items method. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and do it.
Okay, so I just noticed that in the previous section or before I start started writing the new code, I forgot to run this at least to test out the latte and at least to test out how it's represented, but it's okay for now. I'm going to run and we're going to see everything. For now, let's go back and see and look at the new method that we've created. So first of all, we have a new method that we've defined that is called the add underscore item, and it takes in two parameters, the self and the item. Again, the self in here refers to the instance of a class that would be menu manager, and the item is expected to be an instance of the menu item. Now, why do I say expected? Because somebody can provide us with an item that's not from this a specific class and it will cause errors and we have to mitigate these errors but for now we're keeping things very simple we're just expecting that this item is going to be of class menu item and why would it cause errors well because of the first line right here because what we're doing is we're checking if that category already exists in our menu items and if you don't know how we can go through the different keys in here again you should watch the dictionaries video where i explained this or delve deeper into this but basically when we say if item.category not in self.menu items, remember many menu items is a dictionary. Basically, what we're doing is we're going through all of its keys and we're checking if the item.category is not in it, meaning that this is a new category that we're adding. And if it is a new category that we're adding, then we're going to create a new dictionary for that category using this line right here. And notice that now we are using the item that category as a key in between the two square brackets and creating a new empty dictionary. This is only if we don't find that specific category. Now, if we do find the category, that means that this condition right here is false, which means we don't enter into the if block. That means we come back right here and we add the item dot name to that category equals item for a category that already exists. But if we do like this, in any case, this is good because if we create a new category, then we can add that item to that category as we've done right here. And finally, we have a simple printout that tells us that we've accomplished this. So this will allow us to organize menu items, not just by their existence, but categorically and by their name, making it easier to access any specific item directly using its category name. So let's go ahead and right click and see what the output looks like. All right. So first of all, we created the latte beverage, which is 3.5. This is because of the underscore underscore method that we have right here. If I comment this out, look at the output that we get. So this is why we use the underscore underscore method. Right click and run again. Boom. Very nice. Now in here, we add the latte item. That's why it tells us that we've added this latte item. And then we add the coffee beverage. And there we go. It's added. And now when we try to print out the menu manager or the sorry, the menu items in the menu manager, you can see that we get this weird looking output. But don't worry, this is not a weird output. This is just because we don't we're not using the underscore underscore str. This is indicating to us that we have a dictionary. So you can see the dictionary starts right here. This is the category. This is the key that is going to be the category. And this is the value or the first value. Actually, this is the entire value right here. And it's a dictionary and it has its own key that is the latte and the value is an object and then another key. And this is an object. So if you're still not sure of the structure of this menu manager or menu items in the menu manager dictionary, please take the time, understand where the parentheses start, where the parentheses end. And maybe if I try to do something like this so that we can see all of it, you can see that we have dictionary right here, one big dictionary, then we have this key right here. And then we have a second dictionary right here. And I do recommend that you create several different items just so you can test things out.
Okay, so first of all, in here we define a new method that is the remove underscore item that takes in three parameters self, name, category. You already know what the self does. Next, the method checks whether the given category right here exists in the self.menu items dictionary and whether the specific name of the item exists in that category. So once we make sure that that category exists, and this is to avoid any errors, because if we try to access a key that's not available in the dictionary, this, there's going to be an error. So first we check that this category exists, then we check if the name of the item is part of that category. And if both of these conditions are true, that means that we do have that item inside of our dictionary under that cat category, and we simply delete that entry. And after successfully removing the item, we print out a confirmation message. Now, after removing the item, the method checks if the category has no items left. And this is something that I did not tell you to do. But this is something that you need to start as a programmer as a developer, you need to start considering these small details. Because if we remove all the items from a category, and we don't have anything inside of that category, should we keep that category? Well, no, because there's nothing in there. So now we just have an extra entry without any significant items inside. And this can cause problems whenever you're trying to print things out, not just aesthetically, like literally cause errors in your code and prevent you from presenting your menus properly. So now with this if statement right here, if not self.menu, this checks if the category in the sub dictionary is empty. And if it is, we simply delete it using the del right here, similar to what we've done right here at the top. Now, finally, we have an else statement and this else statement else statement belongs to this if right here, notice that they are on the same line of indentation. And this is simply to print out to the user that the item was not found in the category, or maybe the name is not present in that category. Maybe that category doesn't even exist. So we simply tell the user that it was not found. So let's go ahead and test it out. So if you remember, we had the latte right here. So after we print out the menu, I'm going to remove the coffee. So I'm going to do menu manager dot remove item. And I'm going to remove the coffee. I will duplicate this line and add it right here at the top. Oh, so it needs also the um, uh, it's a good idea. You know what I was thinking now, I was thinking maybe we could remove the item directly. So for example, we could create something right here in the remove item where we just give it the the object that we want to remove, and we extract the category and the name from that object. But then again, I thought maybe just provide it with the name and category that might be easier. Again, like for a user interaction, if there's a user that has no idea how these things work, they would simply have two square uh, input uh, on, on their application where they have to input the coffee and the beverage, or maybe usually that uh, item would have an ID and they enter it and it's removed. But again, we're keeping things simple. So in here, instead of coffee, we provide it with the name. And we're going to provide it with the category that has to be, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So right here, I'm also going to add a print just to separate things right click and run. Okay, so everything was added, we have latte right here. And as you can see, the coffee is removed. Excellent. So this is working, removed coffee from the beverage, let me duplicate this and let's remove latte as well. And I want to see if the beverage still exists, because now beverage has nothing in it. So when I right click and I run, excellent, the beverage was entirely removed because there's no more items inside of that category. Let's continue on. Okay, so we've defined a new method that is the update items price with four new parameters. <laughs> well, not new, but 
four different parameters, self, name, category, and new price. These are self-explanatory. So whenever you want to update the items menu, again, you provide it with a name, a category, and the new price that you want to set. And inside, similar to what we've done in the remove items, we need to make sure that this category exists in the menu items dictionary. And we need to make sure that the name is also part of that category to avoid any errors and just, well, to make sure that we have that item indeed. Now inside, we're going to say that the self.menu item so we access, first of all, we get our dictionary, then we access the category, and then we access the name, or, or we access the actual item using the name key. And then because we are, we now have with this accessing right here, we have the actual object, so we can access the price and we can set a new price to that object. And finally, we print out the new price. Price. And otherwise, if we don't find that object, we print out this statement right here. So let's go ahead and test it out. Uh, to do this, I'm not going to remove the items. Or actually, you know what, I'm just going to do it right here. I'm going to print this out. I'm going to say menu manager dot uh, update item price. So let's go ahead and update the latte. I'm simply going to copy this because it looks exactly like the way we're initializing. And remember, it was 3.5. I'm going to make it into 12.5. This is inflation, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to print out latte again, right click and run. And as you can see right here, the price of the latte was 3.5. Now it's 12.5. If I try to print out the coffee, it should stay the same 2.5 as before. So now I want to add a few more examples right here, a bit more um, diversity because currently we only have beverages. So let's add some desserts. Okay, so now when I right click and I run, as you can see right here, uh, da -da 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 -da, let me wrap this up. So beverages, Coffee, excellent. So as you can see, we only have one key in the big dictionary, in the outer dictionary, only one key that has, that is the beverage and has a dictionary that is, that contains latte and coffee. We updated the price and we added thermosu and we forgot to print it out. So let's go ahead and print it out. Duplicate this using control D and put it at the bottom because I want to see it right here. Right click and run again. So as we've seen before, beverage right here. Now we have beverage. And notice we start with this dictionary. It goes, 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 and closes right here. Because now we have another entry that is the, that is the, the that is the dessert. And that dessert has tiramisu. And the value is right here. And this is also very important because notice, once we've removed all the beverages, only the dessert is left. All right, very nice. We have everything working properly for us. All right, so this is going to be the last method that we create before we get into the challenge. So right here, as you can see, we define a new method that is the list items by category and it takes in the self and the category so that we can list everything. What we do in here is again to avoid any errors, we check if the category exists in the menu items and then for item in self dot menu items category dot items. And if you're familiar with dictionaries, of course you should be. I mean, we've been working with dictionaries for the past close to 30 minutes, I guess, at this point. So the dot items returns two things or it returns an object that contains two things. It's going to return the key and value. So if I hover right here, oh, please, come on, give me something. It does not want to give me anything, but basically it returns the key value pairs inside of that item. And we simply print out each item. And if we don't find that category, we simply print out that the car category was not found. So I'm going to print this out twice, once before removing the items and once after. So to do right here, I'm going to add a print 
and I'm going to say menu manager dot uh, list items by category and I'm going to print out all the beverage be be beverage and I'm going to duplicate this and print out all the beverages again and I'm also going to duplicate this and print out all of my desserts boom boom there we go right click and run and I don't have a very nice output so coffee remove dessert okay doesn't look like a very nice output so I'm a bit dizzy right here because I can't understand which ones are the menu.list items, so I'm going to remove the printing of menu items. In reality, we would never do this. We would never access uh, the attribute directly and print it out. So now I will right click and run. And as you can see, boom, this is the output that we get. So as you can see, it's a dictionary that returns the key and the value pair. Now, again, this is not a good looking value, of course, because it's simply printing out the menu object directly. It's not really representative of the object that we want to look at. So what you could do instead in here is for each item, you can also, where is it? So right here, we can say, for example, the name so this is going to be the item name and the item in itself and now this should look a bit better i believe yes there we go excellent so as you can see it looks slightly better where is it uh, right here there we go you can see that they are printed out much better and you can do something even better than this so for example right here so once we find the category and we're printing out we can print out for example uh, category two dots and then right here we can say category and then right here I can actually add a backslash D backslash T Boop, there we go and you know what this will indeed look better Boom, there we go right click and run there we go. So as you can see the category beverages, we have latte and coffee. And again, like for example, right here, we don't want to see beverage again, and we don't want to, to see dessert again. These are things that you can play around, make sure that the menu looks perfect. The goal of this exercise is, is not to make sure that everything works uh, perfectly for a user. And these are things that need to be meticulously crafted and played around with. But this is just to give you an idea of how we're creating all of this, uh, all of these classes and how we're manipulating dictionaries and how we're changing prices and updating prices and so on and so forth. Ladies and gentlemen, <sighs> If you don't know, uh, I've been sick. That's why last week I did not uh, provide you with a video. If you're watching this in the future, you have no idea of my schedule. And uh, my voice is starting to hurt. Uh, well, not my voice. My throat is hurting. And my voice, I feel, is going to start cracking. So let's move on to the challenge. And your challenge is going to be the following. So we're going to start working with data files. First of all, in the same menu item class, add a new method to dict that returns a dictionary with keys being strings representing the item's attributes and the values being the attributes themselves. You'll next, you'll need to define a function to dict func that takes in an object and calls the to dict method on that object and simply returns the result. So you can start seeing what we're doing in here. If you've gone through the video where we work with uh, files, reading and writing, you'll know what we're doing in here. We're trying to serialize these objects because we cannot write these objects or uh, read these objects from a dictionary from, sorry, a .json file if they're not a dictionary. So what we are going to do is each item, we're going to convert its attributes into dictionaries and then write them to a file. And once we read from a file, they are going to be in the form of a dictionary and we'll see how that will look like. In the menu manager, define a method save to file that takes in a file name and inside open the file in the writing mode and or opens sorry opens the file in the writing mode and dumps the menu items into a json file set the default equal parameter in the dot dump to the to to dict func 
and all of this if it seems weird back to the video that I'm going to mention at the top for reading and writing. In the same class define the last method load from file that takes in a file name opens the file in the reading mode and loads the data into into the menu underscore item dictionary be careful of how that data must be broken down very very careful of how it should be otherwise you're going to get errors and use the .json file I've provided you with to load the data so I'm going to give you a JSON file that will contain uh, a lot of uh, items of uh, from different categories and different prices and names and etc so you need to watch out for that and finally test out the different different methods at every point so pause the video right now and go do the challenge okay so as you can see we've created a new method inside of the menu items that is the to dict and it's defined within the menu items class because the menu items objects are going to be using this and it has a single parameter that is the self which again refers to the instance of the menu items class now what follows inside of the method is pretty straightforward we simply return something and what we return and that or that something is is a dictionary this basically constructs a dictionary that contains three key value pairs each key represents an attributes of the menu items object that is the name category and price and the corresponding values are going to be the attributes of the object in itself so by calling this method the to dict method on an instance of the menu item it returns a dictionary containing the current state of the menu items in a clear format that is the dictionary format and this is going to be very helpful whenever we try to write these items to a file because when you're writing to a JSON it doesn't understand that this is a, a menu item or it has a name and category and price and dissects it no you have to show it you have to serialize it into a format that JSON understands and that format is the dictionary so let's continue on and create a function not a method okay and this is our function now what's the difference between a function and a method it's because the function that is inside of a class is called method and if you don't know why that is the case because you need to go watch the functions video and the object oriented programming video so here we have a function named the to dict func and it defined or it takes in a single parameter that is the object not notice that it doesn't take the self because the to dict function is not going to be called on an instance it just gets called on its own now inside it's very very simple we simply return that object on which we call the to dict method so we take in an object that should be of type menu item right here and we return the object dot to dict so basically what we're doing is we're adding an extra step that will allow us to access this dictionary right here and you might be thinking why why are we doing the all of this isn't it kind of unnecessary but what this does is or what it's called is this it's called a utility or a helpful helper function and it allows for the to dict method to be called on any past object and you'll see how helpful this becomes when we work on the next function that is going to be the save to file okay so i believe that before i start writing writing the code i said we're going to be creating a function save to file no i meant a method that is save to file but don't worry like there's no problem in playing around with these words as long as you properly understand what the concept is but for me as an instructor i should be cautious with what words i use anyway the method save to file defined was defined inside of the menu manager and i'm going to actually because we have a lot of methods in here that we don't uh, need anymore so I'm going to make them smaller and by the way when I call the JSON right here you can see that it imported JSON on itself maybe you're using a different IDE and this doesn't happen to you so 
you might have an error there. So keep that in mind. Anyways, right here we define the save to file and it takes in the self and the file name. And the execution goes as follows. First of all, we have the with open file name as file. And if you don't know how this works, again, I'm going to refer you to the video about reading and writing. It's a very popular video. A lot of people and a lot of students actually enjoyed this. So basically this line opens a file with a name specified by the file name parameter sent to it in the right mode. So I open the file with this file name in the right mode and the file variable right here represents the file handle used to write data to the file. So we're going to be used, using this as a variable to tell Python that we're writing to this file, basically. Now, inside of the with block, we have the json.dump and some information inside. So let's go through these. But before I go through every single individual one, this entire line, basically what it does is it serializes the menu items dictionary of the object self into the JSON format and writes it to a specified file, which is this right here. So we have the default right here and the indent. These are kind of weird. This should be self-explanatory. Basically, I'm telling dump or JSON right here if I hover over it. So we're providing it with the object that is the menu item. We're providing providing it with the file to which we want to write. Now the default right here is what it does is it takes in every single item from the menu items and it calls the to dict function on it. Because remember when we were printing out right here, remember when we were printing out the menu items, do you remember how they used to look like? I'll just give you a reminder. So right here. So, okay. Um, right here. JSON will understand that we start off with a dictionary beverage as a key, and then it has another dictionary with a key latte. JSON is good with that. But what JSON is not good with is right here, this object. They, JSON doesn't know how to serialize it. So what we've done in here as we told Jason, whenever you encounter an object that looks like this with menu item and some weird stuff in here, by default, you should use the to dict function on it. All right, so Jason now, it sees beverage, excellent. It sees latte, excellent. Now it starts constructing things and then it finds this menu item object. So what it does is it's, it uses this to dict func sends in, where is it? Sends in the object that's right here, uh, sends in the object and then the to dict method is called upon that object which converts it into a dictionary that JSON does understand and we can serialize and properly write every single item to it. And finally, the indent argument formats the JSON output to be more readable with each level of the structure being indented properly. And after we write to that file successfully, we simply print out a menu saved to the file. So if I right click and I run, nothing happens because I didn't call <laughs> I didn't call the method itself. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to add a few items and I'm going to call it. Okay, so before I run, I need to provide this uh, save to file with a file path. So what I will do, oh, and by the way, I just added two items and notice that I didn't save them in variables. I just created them on the spot and added them to the menu manager. So right here, I'm going to right click and to create a new directory. And I'm going to call this exercise uh, 10 uh, files, just call it files, should be enough capital F, boom. So now we have this directory. So now what I'll do is I'm going to say right here that I want to save this in. Wait, let me reformat. Oops. Let me <laughs> uh, refactor and rename because I just want to copy it. I don't want to make any mistakes. Boom, exercise 10. And then backslash or forward slash 
and we're just going to call it the uh, what should we call it just menu menu dot json okay so now i right click and i run and boom success so let's see yes menu save to file so if i look back right here i can see that i have a new item that is the menu and double click and voila how I don't know why I said voila, but look at how beautiful this JSON file looks. We have our beverages, the latte, the coffee, we have our dessert, tiramisu, and we have our main course with pasta carbonara, and apparently it's not written like that. I don't know how carbonara is written, doesn't matter. And I have cheeseburger right here, and I'm starting to cough, I'm starting to die. Guys, I hope all of this is understood. Uh, these are, as you can see, separated properly. This is what I meant by serialization, where we had to return name, category, and price as dictionaries. But anyways, let's move on. I need to finish this. I'm about to die. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are at our last method. So this method is going to be the load from file and it's defined within the menu manager class and it has only two parameters, just like the save, the self and the file name. So when executed, the method operates as follows. First, we have this statement right here that opens up the file or a specific file in the reading mode because this time we're not writing to a file, we are reading from a file. And the file is accessed using the file variable right here that we've created. And inside the with block, we start off by reading the JSON formatted data from the file and converting it into a Python dictionary called data. So all of the information that's inside of the JSON file is read using the dot load and it's put into the data variable and this one is the uh, dic is a dictionary now the next step is to create menu items from all of these so first of all we're going to go through each individual item inside of that data separating into categories and items because remember how we have them and items are dictionaries in them in of itself or items each item is a dictionary in of itself so first of all we check if the category not in the menu items and we do this just because we're checking if that category already exists in the menu items that we already have so remember we've created all of these different things in here and now we're adding them again so first we check if the category exists if it doesn't a new category is created now if once the category is created, it doesn't have to be created. Next thing we do is we go through the items again, because remember, we have a dictionary of dictionaries. So items right here is a dictionary as well. So we can go through the item and we have the item name and the item data. Remember, we're separating these into keys and values. So once we have that information, we're going to add a new item under the category right here. So self.menuItems in that category with the item data. Remember right here, this is wrong. This should, be not, should not be item data. This should be item name. Yep, there we go. I felt something weird. So remember the item's name is going to be the key under the dictionaries. So right here, menu item, item name, category and item. So we're creating a menu item on the spot using the name, category, and the price is accessed from the items data. So this is our file. Let's go ahead and input that. So to do, 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 I will scroll down <clears throat> and right here, I'm going to print this out. And I've provided you with the JSON file so what I want you to do is I want you to open it up and drag it right here. A refactor, yes, so there we go. Oh, I just removed it from my own resources. Copy and paste it, don't drag it in, not to self. So 
so right here what I'll do is I'm going to say menu manager dot load from file and it's going to be exercise will it give me a no it will not so I'm going to simply copy this copy paste and it does not like that so I will remove these two and in here it's menu underscore items boom there we go so once we've done that nothing is gonna happen because well we haven't listed anything so I'm going to duplicate this and move it to the top and now again in here something that's important once you've loaded the data you don't know what you have inside of it so we're trying to list items by their category it doesn't look nice I recommend that you create another f function in here or another method in here that lists all the items, all the items under their categories. But this, like this project, was ballooning out of control, and I didn't know where to add this extra method. So, just as a ch outside challenge, create a method that will allow you to uh, print out everything, including the categories. But I already know what the ca categories are, so I will double click. <clears throat> right here I'm going to print out the main course and the drinks and the dessert so uh, main whoa, okay can I please have main course right is that how it's written it has to be correct okay main course I think that will be enough we just want to make sure that we've imported these correctly right click and run and no errors very nice and let's see what we got in here Category main course boom. There we go pasta carbonara cheeseburger and vegan lasagna Whew. Ladies and gentlemen congratulations on making it to the end of the video <clears throat> Congratulations to me. I've been coughing throughout and using the magic of editing to remove things uh, We are at the end of our 10 exercises. Of course, I'm going to be creating more exercises in the future but I think now what we're going to do is we're going to start focusing on oops that microphone is too close to my face we're going to be focusing more on intermediate python stuff and one of the first lessons is going to be the lambda function i believe so so to watch the next video that is the lambda function continue upgrading your python skills adding to your arsenal learning properly if there are things that you didn't understand please make sure to leave me a comment and I an I will definitely answer you within 12 to 24 hours. So, this is going to be your next video. Let's go. Boom. <clears throat> Lambda functions, maybe. Probably. We'll see. But it should be. Let's go.